Hey folks, welcome back to the channel again, nice to see you. So, in the last video, or a couple of videos ago, I introduced you to my latest purchase, my Flowerhorn. We were thinking of calling Humphrey, by the way, and thanks to a suggestion from someone in the comments, as well as my daughter, so that's her favourite name. So, I think we're going to go with that one, Humphrey, you know, comedy genius. So anyway, he is the latest addition to the Aquarium Adventures family. He's a, a two-tone camphor flower horn f2 and i think you'll agree he's pretty stunning i couldn't be more happy with him and um, he's, he's one of the most interactive fishes i've ever had and um, this is my office so this is normally where i sit and do my working out of the corner of my eye his tank's right here and um, he'll quite often just appear and watch me working and then when i turn around to look at him as soon as i do that he kind of backtracks away from him hides from me and um, but he's just starting to get into um, I don't know if it's playing with me, but he, he will definitely come up to the tank. Uh, my kids will come up and they'll make them chase their fingers and all that kind of stuff. All the things that you usually tell people not to do around your fish tanks. But he seems to really enjoy it. Um, and he's doing really well. He's coloured up nice and bright all the time. A really good, aggressive eater. Um, so, yeah, completely loving him. But... I'm the type of person that will research a purchase for months and months before actually pulling the trigger on that. But at the same time, I'm also the type of person that will see something shiny and just buy it straight away. The flower horn was a kind of bit in the middle of this. Um, I did do a lot of research on him, um, on flower horns in general, but it is it's quite mind-boggling. And a lot of the, the research that you might do out on the internet will be focused on the particular strains of flower horn or how to breed flower horns and I'm not that interested in that I'm more interested in am I feeding them too much is the water the right temperature all, all that kind of basic stuff now it's there if you look for it but there was no real simple flower horn 101 so I find that Facebook groups are a really good resource for this type of thing you can post messages on there and you'll usually be inundated with stuff but you can kind of tell for reading between the lines and pick out the ones who know what they're talking about or the ones that you want to uh, pay a little bit more attention for them. and um, I joined a couple of good flower horn groups um, I shall leave links in the description but um, in particular one had a member who's a fellow youtuber and um, who I've been following for a while and um, he also posts loads on Instagram as well so I thought I'll ask him, reach out, ask him if he'll help me out and answer some of the basic questions so rather than me trying to repeat these things to you we'll hand over to him now Hi guys my name's Paul and I have a channel on YouTube called Big Fish Lad and I have a, channel, uh, a page on Instagram uh, with the same name Big Fish Lad the, um, the, the topic is Central American cichlids and hybrid fish mainly flower horns so I just currently have two flower horns at the moment. Uh, I have the King Camphor behind me, which is Bosco, and I have a female golden base flower horn. Obviously the purpose of this video is for me to talk about some facts, some hints and tips, and some basics around keeping flower horns. Um, so firstly, what do I feed my flower horn? So you can get loads and loads of different flower horn foods on eBay, places like that, but there's some foods that are closer to home that actually work like your carry cichlid gold that's a fantastic pellet for them um, brings the colour out really well uh, especially the reds um, you can get the akari blood parrot red food food which I believe I've not used that myself but I know people who have used that and it's absolutely brilliant apparently so I have ordered some um, that again you can get on eBay Amazon that kind of thing um, also I have some spirulina so spirulina is really good for the pearling so if you want to bring pearling out on your fish then use spirulina and the, the other good thing with the spirulina is that it's really good for them because it's greens um, and I get mine off Amazon again it's, you know it's you can get spirulina pellets off Amazon floating ones that are really cheap and they've got enough spirulina content, um, content in them to, to get bring the pearling out I mean I've been working on this guy's uh, KOK the front of it here is you know he's got some pearls that weren't coloured up but I've managed to start getting them to colour up with that spirulina and it cost me about four ninety nine. Um but like I say you can go on eBay and you can get all the fancy flower off things but they only do the same things as those foods and another good food as well is fluval bug bites um because it's made obviously it's actually made of bugs it's got bug ingredients in it and that's like a real nice um 
proteiny food for them. They are prone to internal bacteria and swim bladder disease um, and bad diet can give them that. You know, don't give them, I wouldn't give them mussels, I wouldn't give them prawns. The odd earthworm might be okay, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it personally because you've got to ensure they get a good balanced diet and they're getting the right foods. Uh, and I always, I always fast one day a week and I would do that on water change day just to give them a break. The other important thing as well, I'm going back to the feeding now, but the other important thing is that you don't overfeed when feeding them because, again, you know, you don't want to be gut loading them because it's not good for them. They are a hybrid at the end of the day and, and, and I've had lots of flowers and seen lots of flowers that you give them too much and they can they can really suffer from it. And, you know, when you think of an Akari Sickly Gold Pellet Medium, I would give them five, four or five of them at each feeding and you can feed them three times a day. Uh, I personally, I feed mine twice a day. It's up to you. Uh, you can feed them up to one to three times. Um, but yeah, I'd say four or five Akari style uh, size pellets uh, grooming we talked talk about grooming as well so it's really important to groom your flower horns uh, it's only important if you want to make sure that you're getting the best uh, colouring the best aggression out of them so there's a few ways I mean the easiest way to groom your flower horn is to put a mirror in the tank so you can put a mirror in the tank for 20 minutes each day um, and listen they don't always they don't always react to it but if they don't react to it it's fine um, I put one in with this guy and he's not really reacted to it but some of them they'll go mad at it and it really brings the colour out and the aggression out and that's, that's, that's why it's important to groom your flower horns to get the best look um, and get the best personality from them and there's other ways you can do it you can actually put a divider in and put a female on the other side you can try putting a female in with him um, to see how they get on but I always advise against that because it can be quite brutal I've seen people also, and, this is, and I'm not really into this method, but they put like little blood red parrots in jars and stick them in the, in the tank, but it's not for me, to be honest with you. But here's a way that happens, especially in Thailand, places like that. Temperature wise, I have my temperature around 80, 80 Fahrenheit because um, it's just always worked for me in my flower rounds. And I've had quite a lot of flower rounds and I've never had a problem having them at 80. Some people go over that, 82, 84. I would never go, I wouldn't go less than that guys because the cooler temperature can stress them out. Um, these fish are prone to stomach issues, um, inter internal bacteria and um, they can get stressed out. When they get stressed out they can suffer from worms and they can, the KOK can shrink and they can get really within. Um, so I would always make sure your, your temperature is at least 80. Um, you can go 82, 84 if you like. Um, but I say 80 always works for me. Tank size, so I don't know whether this is a myth or not, but I've done a lot of research on flower horns and I've had a lot of flower horns and they they seem to like a more enclosed space. I've tried flower horns in big tanks and it's never worked for me, but I have seen flower horns in bigger tanks. But what I tend to do is I would always start off, maybe if they're small in a 180 litre, maybe uh, up to about five inches, then move them to a a two, 200 to 240 litre until this is this, this is a 240 litre he's about seven seven inches and when they start getting around about nine, ten inches move them to a 350 litre um, if they grow any bigger than that then you can consider obviously putting them, putting them in um, a 400 to 450 litre but I've always found that it works that you keep them more in a, in a, in a tank that's a little bit more where they feel safe because uh, these guys don't live in the wild, they're, they're born in captivity, sorry, they're created in captivity, so um, I think they do like those little enclosed spaces, but obviously nothing too stupid, you know, make sure there's plenty of swimming room. When it comes to decorating the tank, as you can see guys, there's nothing in my tank, I don't put anything in there. Uh, just because they're very, very active fish, they can, when they're aggressive they can dart about, um, and I just don't see the point in putting things in there that they can hurt themselves on. Um, I even put the heater over here and next to the filter pipe because I just keep it tidy and anywhere they can't injure themselves. And he does, he does tend to dart to be honest with you. So it's not about decoration this, keeping flower horns, it's more about the flower horn. The flower horn is your decoration and obviously you get the best out of your flower horn. You've got something that's absolutely beautiful to look at. Life-wise, lifespan, and I think I've heard that Four to, I think lifespan's four to six years on average. 
they don't live that long again it's because of an hybrid they're an hybrid fish and one bit of advice i was i would always give when buying a flower on is buy off a reputable breeder you know i bought this guy off brian johnson cichlids in the uk um i know he's a reputable breeder you pay more but you're paying for a quality fish and you know what it's an hybrid done properly if there's a proper way of doing hybrids the more money you pay for one you know it's been done it's been done right and that's it guys so um i think that's the main basic things uh, around keeping a flower on and thanks for listening thanks for watching so I hope that was as useful for you as it was for me. A big thanks to Paul um, for putting that together for me. Um, go, I will put links in the description. Go and check out his YouTube channel and his Instagram. And there's loads of good information there as well as just some stunning pics of some nice big American cichlids. Go and check out his stuff. Click subscribe. Click follow. Everyone likes that. It doesn't cost anyone anything. But thanks again for that, Paul. Uh, thanks again to everyone else for watching. Please go and check out his channel and his Instagram. And if you haven't already, click like and subscribe and mine as well. It doesn't cost anyone anything. It's my birthday today, so I'll even use that as an excuse. Right. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.